Hey guys, uh, Tim Janik here. I'm with Texas Massage Education. My dad and I, we teach the Sports Massage Certification Program. And within that program, we teach something called pelvic stabilization or pelvic balancing, basically showing you how to uh, check the pelvis out, the um, everything from the PSIS all the way to range of motion is what we're looking at. So to start off, what we're gonna do is, um, one of the very first things that we check is the PSIS. So we check PSIS and we put our thumb just underneath the PSIS. So I'm actually gonna grab this pelvis right over here so you can see what the PSIS looks like. So there's the PSIS and what we're doing is we're not gonna be right on the, the posterior tip of it, but we're gonna be just underneath it on the superior, on the inferior surface of it, okay? So Cindy's laying here. We're gonna take our tips, drop up underneath, and then we're gonna look and see which one is superior and which one is inferior, okay? So again, going back down to this position here, and I can see Cindy's hip, I can see that the left side is superior and the right side is inferior, okay? So that's the first step that tells us something about the pelvis. So if I also have her turn over, and have her turn over into a supine position, Okay, and we can take the PSIS measurement. We can also take the ASIS measurement. And the ASIS measurement are these bony prominences here. So, and what we're gonna do is not be right on the tips, but drop underneath the tip and push up. Okay, so we wanna be on the inferior surface of it, right? So, one thing that's uh, also good to do is do a little bit of traction. I didn't do that before on the PSIS, but do a little bit of traction, then I can have her bring your knees up, bring your knees up lift your hips straight up that helps to reset the pelvis and bring her back down it also helps them to be straight on the table okay so go to the tip of the PSAS I'm on the tips now I'm gonna drop underneath and I want to be on the inferior surface of the ASIS okay so there I can see that her left side is inferior right so after that I'll have her turn over Okay, now we're gonna check the uh, hip flexor's ability to lengthen, all right? So that'd be the psoas and the iliacus. We're gonna start with the legs, knees together, okay? She's go I'm gonna place my hand right on her sacrum here, either on her sacrum or on her ilium there. Either one's fine. What we wanna do is we wanna stabilize the sacrum so the sacrum doesn't move, okay? Then she's gonna bend her knee. Well, actually, let's do the other knee. Let's do that knee. She's gonna bend her knee. She's gonna lift her knee up off the table as high as possible, okay? Now, one thing that's important to, to witness is what's going on with this hip. So if she lifts that knee up, she's gonna bend her knee again, but this time she's gonna lift her hip up off the table. That would be incorrect, okay? We don't wanna see how much she can do rotation with extension. We wanna see how much she can do just extension. All right, so she's gonna bend her knee. She's gonna lift her knee up off the table and then back down. So there we can see how much range of motion she has and she's pretty limited there, All right? So then we would do the other side and repeat the other side on this side too, go ahead and lift up, okay? And there we can see she's actually pretty equal on both sides, okay? So after we've done it in this position, we're actually gonna move the knee, the, the femur out about 30 degrees and repeat the same process. So stabilizing the hip, having her lift her knee up off the table and then back down to the ground again, okay? And bring this knee back in, do the same thing, bring this femur out, good, lift that leg up and then back down, okay? So that's for the iliacus and also for the psoas is what we're testing there, their ability to lengthen. Next, we're gonna check the quadriceps, okay? So in this position, what we're gonna do is, we're, we're gonna do the movement for, I'm gonna do the movement for her instead of having her do a movement like we did for the hip flexors. Okay, so we're testing the quadriceps ability to lengthen. Okay, so normal range of motion would be heel to the hip, right? Which she does that fairly well, okay? One thing to pay attention on this is a lot of people have great range of motion, but they have an extended lumbar curve here. And sometimes what you'll see is though, you'll bring your knee into flexion and then their hip will go into flexion also, okay? Or an anterior tilt, all right? So if that's the case, one of the things you can have them do is tell them to squeeze their glutes, squeeze your glutes, Cindy, okay? And keep her pelvis in that position 
and see what her range of motion is, which her range of motion is pretty good in her quadriceps, okay? All right, so the next one, David's gonna come around to the head of the table here, right? Um, David Laws is our photographer. He's not on Facebook, but he's our photographer. Um, so, in this one, we're gonna be testing the glutes, uh, piriformis, all the deep six rotators here, their ability to lengthen, okay? So starting in this position, straight up, knee bent, we're gonna have Cindy bring her leg out, and what we should see is about 45, 55 degrees range of motion there. That's normal, okay? So she's got good range there, right? One thing we don't wanna see on this is her bringing her leg out and then her hips going with it, okay? That would not be uh, what we're looking for. We want no movement in the hips. She brings her leg out and she stays nice and still. So keeping your hand on the sacrum is a good idea to, to feel what's going on with the sacrum. Okay, so we'll do that to the other side, same thing. Okay, she's gonna bring her leg out to the side. She can, we can see she's a little bit more limited there, okay? So the next one is we're gonna test the, um, <coughs> the TFL, the glute minimus and glute medius anterior fibers, their ability to lengthen by doing external rotation, okay? And those muscles do internal rotation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have Cindy bring her leg in and we can see She's got about, maybe about 40 degrees range of motion, maybe 45. So she should almost be closer to where her, that tibia is touching the other leg. Okay, so she's actually a little restricted there. All right, so bring this, bend that knee and bring the leg in, rotate the leg in. Good, and that one has a little bit more range of motion. Again, we wanna pay attention to the pelvis. So if I have Cindy do this movement here, go ahead and rotate it in. You can see her hip, she's trying so hard that the hip is starting to come up, starting to go into rotation. So that's not what we want. So I'm gonna have her do it again. And I'm feeling for where that hip wants to start to come up. Okay, and it's about right there, okay? So we can see that that right side is definitely more restricted. All right, next thing he's gonna lay on her uh, back. She's gonna go into supine, okay? <clears throat> next one that we're gonna do is gonna be to test the glutes ability length, and so glute maximus, glute medius, okay? So she's gonna bend her knee and then she's gonna do hip flexing, hip flexion. She's gonna bring her knee all the way up to her chest as far as she can. Now, if that's as far as she can get, which is that's generally the case, I'll put my hand on her underneath her knee on her thigh and I'm gonna assist her with it. And she's gonna tell me if she feels a stretch or not. Do you feel a stretch? Okay, not really. I'm wearing my adductors. <laughs> so she's got pretty good range of motion there. Okay, go to the other side, we'll do the same thing. Just bring a knee up, go and bring it on up. And I usually have them do it first, okay? Sometimes if they feel it, what they should be feeling is tightness through that area, okay? Uh, glutes area and upper hamstring. And we go a little bit more into flexion there, anything there? Yeah. Cindy? Yeah, where do you feel it? All the way here. All the way in the back, okay? So that's exactly where she should be feeling. All right? So next one is the hamstring. We're gonna be testing the hamstring's ability to lengthen. So keeping the knee uh, locked out and straight. She's gonna raise the leg up. Okay, now if she had shorts on, we're gonna move that down. We can see her knee is slightly, slightly bent. So what we want is a completely locked out knee. Bring the leg up as far as you possibly can. And that's about where her range of motion is. Normal is about 90 to 100, okay? So she's, she's a little shy of that. Let's see this side. So again, we want the knee locked out and straight, okay? In that position, we can see that she has an easier time keeping that one locked out and straight, okay? But also she's not at the correct range of motion yet. All right, so a little tight there, okay? So next one is, um, she's gonna be doing, we're gonna be testing the abductor's ability to lengthen here. Okay, so she's gonna point her toe straight up, toe straight up like that. And she's gonna take this leg and bring it out to the side. Now when they do this, we're testing the abductors, these muscles right here, their ability to lengthen, okay? Normal range of motion about 45 to 55 degrees on this one. Okay, so she is a little bit restricted there. Let's see this side. And a little restricted there. They feel restricted? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I think it's always important to get your client's feedback, the person that you're working with, to see what they feel too, not only what you're seeing. All right, so the next part, we're gonna take this knee, we're gonna test the TFL, 
uh, the glute medius, minimus, and maximus, their ability to lengthen in this position by having Sydney do um, adduction going across the body, okay? Normal range of motion is about 45, 30 degrees range of motion there. Okay, so she's gonna switch sides, do the same thing on that side, okay? Again, it's important to keep the knee, uh, the, the toe pointing straight up and the knee locked out. What we don't wanna see on this one is bringing the knee, uh, bending the knee, actually come over here, David, okay? Sometimes what you'll see is people will bend the knee, rotate their legs, so bend your knee more, they'll rotate it, they'll do all this stuff to try to get more range of motion, okay? What we wanna see is true range of motion of what's going on here in the hip, not what's going on here in the knee. So she's gonna do it again, bring the leg over, and then back again, okay? One other thing to pay attention on this movement is any drop in the hip, okay? Sometimes what they'll do is they'll, they'll drop the hip and then they'll extend the thoracic spine over to try to get more range of motion, okay? We don't wanna see that, All right? So that's, uh, that's our version of pelvic stabilization and balancing, and I uh, hope that helps you guys who have taken the course, and those who haven't taken the course, that's something that we teach in our pelvis class. All right, we'll talk to you later.